I'm Whitney Norris. I'm the clinical director of Chanel Family Therapy Saline County Office. And my primary specialization within the practice is that I work with trauma. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to, to deal with the question, what is trauma? Now, the word trauma, as you probably are aware, comes with a lot of baggage. Um, you've got all kinds of opinions, and then even within the professional realm, all kinds of definitions for trauma. So what I want to cover in this video is, is just a basic um, understanding of trauma, one of many basic understandings um, of trauma. And then I also want to talk just a little bit near the end about how to detect trauma, how, what I'm looking for as a professional within the first couple sessions, and maybe might help you determine whether you're dealing with trauma or, or one of your loved ones is dealing with trauma. Um, so what I want to start with is one of the key misunderstandings of trauma is about determining whether a trauma, a traumatic event or a traumatic memory, whether it be recent or from childhood, actually qualifies as trauma. Um, so the main point I want to drive home about that, I could go on about this one for a long time. The main point I want to drive home about that is trauma is trauma because of the way it's stored in the brain, not about the event itself. And so when I hear people, and I hear it all the time, oh, that's not trauma. You know, that I had a brother or a sister or a friend or saw someone on the news who went through, some, through something so much worse than that. And, and it's neither here nor there. It's, it, trauma itself is not a comparison type of thing. Trauma is the way it's stored in the brain. And I, I think I'll, I'll cover a little bit later about that. But I just want to drive home the point here to begin with is that you don't just look at an event and say, nope. A trauma or yeah it, it is a trauma you know it, it is so much more about the way the brain stores that and so trauma can be lots of different things um, they can they can be the more obvious things that we see such as childhood physical abuse or sexual abuse or or the more elusive things like neglect or one that people continually discredit inaccurately is bullying in school you know it happens to a lot of people so it's not trauma doesn't make it any more or less trauma. Again, trauma is trauma because of the way it's stored in the brain. Part of this misperception is understandable. I think a big part of it is because things like sexual abuse or childhood physical abuse are always called trauma by most people. They're always called trauma. And the reason that's true is because the vast majority of these times, the or the times these big events are stored as trauma. You know, so it's not that they're, they're trauma because it's sexual abuse or because it's physical abuse, which again, people will define differently. But it's trauma because of the way I respond to it and the way it is stored in my brain. And that's the part we'll talk about near the end. So the second point I want to make about trauma that really simple and, and could be its own video really at the same time is that the best way I've heard people define trauma or or kind of conceptualize it, I guess, is trauma means past is present. So when I have unprocessed trauma, for me, past is present. And so that's why triggers make sense. So, so think about the war veteran who hears a car backfire and he hits the deck. His brain has been triggered or that memory has been triggered in a way that he's back there. In his mind, he may be able to see images, smell smells. He is there because his brain has brought him there. And that's a sign of unprocessed trauma. Now, there are lots of ways that can manifest itself. I do see a lot of people who have this more cut and dry trauma, and most people walk in knowing that's trauma, right? It gets a little stickier when we get into the less simple traumas, the more complex traumas, like neglect and um, bullying and, and just poor attachment um, and family of origin. So those things can look a little more like um, a small criticism by a partner and you just fly off the handle. And so now we're getting into the realm of what I look for with trauma, right? So what I'm looking for is what I call the trauma gap, okay? Stick with me, I'll explain it a couple times. So first, on this level, this is what's happening. So I'll, I'll use my uh, spouse's criticism for this. So 
my spouse is criticizing me and I may even logically know it's a legitimate criticism. You know, I, I really did do a bad job at this and they're maybe not even saying it ugly. Maybe they are. So here logically is what's happened. But when this happens, here's my response. I have this emotional, just doesn't even match most of the time. Now, sometimes this is subtle. Sometimes it's obvious. A lot of people, when they come into my office, they see it. They're like, this keeps happening. And I respond this way and it feels so out of control and it feels like it feels like there's nothing I can do about it, you know, and and here the key too is they may or may not be aware of why that's happening. Some people know here I am when this happens, bam, I'm nine years old and my dad's standing over me yelling at me. Okay, some people know that a lot of people don't. So what I'm looking for just to begin with in early sessions is this trauma gap. I sort of started to have a radar for it, even when people say nothing about trauma, is, is this keeps happening, and then my response is this. Now, I could do probably five different videos on, on why this is the case, but I'll start with just a little bit. Like I said, I would explain some of the brain part of it. The reason for this is both complicated and simple. Um, I'll go with the simple explanation because I'm not a neuroscientist. Um, so the reason for that, and, and remember, it's, it's trauma because of the way it's stored in the brain. So trauma itself is stored, and research will tell you this over and over that I won't get into, but re research has shown us over the years that trauma itself is stored in a um, simpler, more primitive part of the brain. Now, this more primitive part of the brain is separate from the rational brain. See? Rational brain, emotional response, right? So to understand that, we got to understand that this is both good and bad, okay? Sure, we would rather our rational brain be able to come on board when our trauma is triggered, but when it's unprocessed, it's stuck there. And this more primitive limbic part of the brain where the trauma is stored is state dependent. That part's really key. Past is present, remember. State dependent meaning I'm back there when this gets triggered. You know, the war veteran even isn't responding as a 60-year-old man. He's responding at his, as his 22-year-old self in that, in that memory, right? So it's state-dependent, and it just gets stuck. So I hear all the time spouses talk about when we start arguing, he's usually really logical, and we hit this point, and it's like he's 12. And immediately my question stereotypically is, so what was going on with you about 12? Um, and that's because those traumas, again, are state dependent because of where it's stored in the brain. So, like I said, this is good and bad. Um, the, the best illustration I know to help understand the good and the bad, obviously bad when it's not processed, right? But good because, let's say hypothetically, a grizzly bear comes into the room with me and I'm not going to stop and say, Bear looks angry, judging by size and fur. I think he's a grizzly. I should probably run. You know, luckily our, my brain is not going to do that. I am going to fight, flight, or freeze. And that's that survival part of that brain, that more primitive part that I'm really grateful for in those moments. But it becomes a problem when my brain no longer knows that this trauma is so the grizzly bear, metaphorically, keeps following me through life or keeps popping up or I keep thinking he's popping up and he's not really there. And so that's what people talk about when they're talking about triggers. On a, on a simple scale, that's what we're talking about. And so what needs to happen, back to the trauma gap, what needs to happen in trauma therapy, and there are lots of different ways to do that. I may cover EMDR in another, another video. Um, but what we're looking for is to close this gap on some level. So what we're looking for is to process the original traumatic memory or series of memories so that my brain knows it's over and so that my, my rational brain can be on board in those moments when that trauma is triggered. And, and so what we're, like I said, what we're looking for is closing that gap and just processing the brain. Like I said, I'll, I'll probably cover that in at least another video or two. Um, but I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have a loved one or you are, are wondering yourself about trauma, I would love to be able to sit down with you and even just do a, a quick consult. Um, and there are lots of different ways to kind of to feel that out. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. 
and you're welcome to call or email anytime with questions. Thank you.